I've followed the career of Norman Finkelstein for many years. Um, he's notorious for having destroyed his career by, among other things, weaponizing his parents being in the Holocaust to use his career to attack Israel in particular. Uh, I think all societies produce a type of sociopath and psychopath, and I do think that Norman Finkelstein is just such a person. If I can give just one example. He repeatedly in that interview referred to Gaza as a concentration camp. Gaza is no such thing as a concentration camp, and Norman Finkelstein knows that very, very well. I understand that there was this um, natural feeling to hate people who said something you do not like. I understand that there was this um, human emotion that gets triggered whenever someone said something that you find not accommodating. But you would hope that for someone representing a country, for someone with a very important profession like a journalist, they will try their best to not let their emotions get the better part of them, even though they are humans. They will try their best to always be neutral and to take a nuanced stand in any given conversation. But not for Douglas. Douglas is a strong supporter of Israel and he would defend Israel no matter what. I have watched him a couple of times on interview by P.S. Morgan and other outlets and he has never ever said that or even listen when people are trying to bring up the point that maybe Israel should consider another approach to their whole eradication of Hamas. That maybe what Israel has been doing so far has not, has not been working out for them because maybe the approach is not the one that gets the goals achieved. And that if their only intention, if their only goal is to have a Hamas-free Gaza, then the way they have been going about this might not necessarily be the best. And as any human being, when you do something or when you are doing something whereby the result of it isn't what you want isn't what make you achieve the goal. You will have to pause and uh, reconsider things all over again. You will have to pause and try to reevaluate what you've done so far, how much achievement you've gained so far, and if the method you are applying in achieving a certain goal is actually working out or not. If things are going your way, or not. That is what any rational being would do. But I guess not Israel, at least not the authorities anyway. I think for the Israelis War Council or for the members of the Benjamin National Coalition government, what they have been doing is what they wanted to do. It doesn't matter if it's brings them closer to achieving their goal, which is eradicating Hamas or not. I think that is, to them, is immaterial. What they have always wanted is to show how strong they are, how powerful they are. And them leveling Gaza has proved just that. And maybe they are happy with the outcome of what they've done so far. So let's hear what Douglas Morey had to say about Professor Finkelstein. I've followed the career of Norman Finkelstein for many years. Um, he's notorious for having destroyed his career by, among other things, weaponizing his parents being in the Holocaust to use his career to attack Israel in particular. Uh, I think all societies produce a type of sociopath and psychopath. And I do think that Norman Finkelstein is just such a person. If I can give just one example. 
He repeatedly in that interview referred to Gaza as a concentration camp. Gaza is no such thing as a concentration camp, and Norman Finkelstein knows that very, very well. Every single Jew was removed from Gaza forcibly in 2005 by the Israeli government. In 2006, the people of Gaza had an election and they elected Hamas. Hamas proceeded to kill Fatah and other Palestinians who did not agree with Hamas. And if anyone is responsible for making Gaza into a prison camp, it is Hamas that uses places like the Shifa Hospital as torture chambers for Palestinians. Now, here's another oddity about it. He kept saying concentration camp about Gaza. Do you peers know anybody who got out of a concentration camp in 1945 and proceeded to go next door and behead and rape everyone they could find? I don't. But only Norman Finkelstein finds these kinds of comparisons to make and makes them willfully. And by the way, and shame on him for this, what we just heard was Holocaust denial in real time. He pretends we don't know what happened on mm. the 7th of October. We do know. We do know. And if he doesn't believe the reports he reads, and if he doesn't believe all of the international media, he should have come with me this morning to the pathology department here in Tel Aviv, where they are still trying to work out who the bodies are that are arriving. Yeah, so you can hear what Dr. Amori had to say about his fellow Jewish brother. Because they disagree on the foundation of the Jewish state. They disagree on so many things about how uh, Israel, or at least Benjamin Netanyahu and his local government are going about this whole issue in Gaza. and. He believed, I mean, Professor Finkelstein believes that Palestinians or Gazians are people with feelings. And uh, if things are done unjust to them, they might not want to be friends with Israel, which is but normal. But you can hear the way Douglas described him and uh, diagnose him of being someone who is not totally sane who is not a totally sane person, right? <laughs> it's funny. Douglas is someone I have watched, and I have to say, he, according to him, Israel can do no wrong, or Benjamin Netanyahu can do no wrong. And uh, Israel is just doing whatever Israel is doing to protect itself. And uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is the only person that can save Israel from the Palestinians. And if Israel does not go on with what they are doing. Israel faces an existential threat from the Palestinians or from Hamas. And if Israel puts down their guns or their weapons, they would be destroyed by Hamas or by the Palestinians. And according to Douglas, everything Israel has done so far is justifiable. And according to him, we should not forget how this whole thing started. It all started when Hamas attacked Israel on the 7th of October. So according to Doc last year, everything started from the 7th of October. On the 6th of October, Israel and Palestinians were like best buddies. They lived peacefully. They liked each other. They were happy with each other. That's what Doc Lass would want us to believe. Hadn't been... Hamas attacked Israel. We will not have been facing all this. We will not have been having all these issues right now. But we are only having this because Hamas attacked Israel. That is what doctors want us to believe. But if you, my viewers, could just go online and do your own research, you realize that there is a long or very huge files of human rights violations that have been committed by the Israeli government. You will see a lot of things that have been done against the Palestinian people. You will come to understand that the whole conflict did not just start on the 7th of October, as Douglas and most Israeli people will want you to believe. This thing has been ongoing. This has been an ongoing issue for a very long time, and everyone wasn't really paying attention. It's just like a boiling pot that exploded. 
it wasn't like the pot wasn't boiling in the first place. The pot has always been boiling. It just exploded on our faces now. You hear Douglas calling his own colleague names. That is what most Israelis hardliners would do. When you start questioning their actions, when you start saying you doubt if what they are doing is the right thing, they will start going after you. They will start calling you names. Some of them will go as far as calling you anti-Semitic. They do not like to take legitimate concern and uh, give it some thought. They don't want that. They don't like that. That is too difficult for them to do. Rather, they just label you as someone who is anti-Semitic, as someone who do not like seeing the Jewish states exist, which I do not believe that to be true because most people have always wanted Jewish people to exist. Most people have, are kind of like done with the whole notion of Jewish state. I personally believe that Palestinians and Israelis can live peacefully if there is justice between the two peoples. But if there is no justice, no accountability, no freedom of, uh, of, of movement, no uh, human right for one people, then there won't be any peace. Peace, freedom, liberty has to be for both the Palestinians and the Israelis. That is the only way we can ever get peace in the area. But you, but you guys out there, what is your take on what Douglas Murray said about Professor Fickenstein? Is he right or not? Share that thought in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. Please do not forget to like this video, uh, subscribe to this channel because that helps us a lot. And we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.